Hello everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. It's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey and all the things that I've been getting up to crafting wise. So today's video is going to be a little fabric haul and a pattern haul. So I have got a couple of pieces of fabric that I bought over the um, Christmas sales and some patterns as well that I've been buying recently. There's a couple of patterns that I've just ordered and I'll be talking about a printing service that I've used for those. Um, and then when it arrives, I'll talk in a bit more detail about that. So before I get into sharing all the lovely fabrics and patterns, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. You will recognize this as one of my Billy dresses and I've shared this before in one of my makes videos. Um, it's made in this gorgeous pink um, sweatshirting fabric that I got from Like So Amazing. And then I used pink ribbing for the neckband and the cuffs because this fabric hasn't got a huge amount of stretch um, and I was worried that if I used the same fabric for the neckband I wouldn't be able to get it over my head and I worried that this would have been too tight as well and then I have made the dress version and then I've got a darker pink band on the bottom just again made in ribbing because I was worried that this sweatshirting wouldn't be um, stretchy enough and I didn't want it to feel tight around this area. Um, I didn't put pockets in, I love it, it's really roomy and it's nice and cosy and I have got the balloon sleeves and then um, it gathers sort of into the shoulders too and I think Sarah might have some of this fabric left and I'll link it down below if she has and if she hasn't I'll link her shop down below anyway. So on to fabrics, yeah I'll start with fabrics first. So on to some fabrics that I've been buying. I've got two shops to talk about. And the first one, I'll start with Sewisfaction. Um, I bought a couple of, now I wrote down what it's called actually. It's called Knitted Cotton. Um, and I've been looking for a fabric like this for ages, which looks basically like it's been knitted. Um, and I wanted to make either like a really oversized snuggly jumper or a cardigan. And True Bias had just released their Marlowe sweater pattern, which is a, a button-down cardigan. So I've just ordered that pattern, um, and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail at the end. But I've got two bits of fabric that I got from Sews Faction. It's exactly the same type of fabric. It's the knitted cotton fabric, um, and they're both planes. The first one is a navy, so I'll just hold it up so you can see that lovely texture. So I've got a navy colourway, and then I went for a red colourway. Um, and it's just got this gorgeous knitted texture. I've got a bit of thread on there. Um, yeah, it's got this gorgeous knitted texture. If I hold it up, it's slightly um, like holy, so you can sort of see through it. But it feels really lovely and soft and snuggly and exactly what I want to wrap myself in. Um, it has got quite a lot of stretch. You can see there, it's got quite a lot of stretch. Um, and I got a metre of each, but it's really wide fabric. So I'm hoping I'll be able to turn one of them into a snuggly jumper and one of them into a cardigan. Um, so those are the first two pieces of fabric I got. So that one's the red, and then I'll just hold up the navy so you can see what that looks like when it's um, open. And they're both quite heavy fabrics too. So they have got a little bit of movement to them. They're both quite bouncy, and I think that comes from the stretch. They're both really quite bouncy, but I can't wait to turn them into something that's going to be really snuggly. And I'm hoping actually to turn them into something that acts as a um, sort of an extra layer when the weather's a bit chilly. So an oversized jumper that I can throw on over maybe one of my viscose dresses that aren't quite as warm or a cardigan to add an extra layer when it's a little bit chilly. Um, yeah, and they're exactly what I was hoping for, actually. I've been looking for this type of fabric for ages. Um, so I'll link Sewisfaction down below and if I can, I'll link these fabrics for you if you're interested in getting your hands on some. They're both beautiful and I think they're going to be great additions to my wardrobe, particularly because I've gone for the plain colours. So I've got a couple of really lovely pieces of fabric from a shop called Hey So Sister and I'll link them down below. They're a fairly new fabric shop. Um, they sell the most beautiful fabrics. Um, one of the fabrics that I got is an active wear lycra and then the other one is a viscose which I have wanted for ages and I've resisted and resisted but then when I was getting the active wear fabric I thought I might as well get the viscose at the same time and they were also doing an offer where you got a free tote bag so how can I not resist getting a free tote bag and um, I'll show you the tote bag first um, so it says um, life is too short for boring fabric which is really apt actually for the first piece of fabric now I can only show you a little bit because I've actually already made them up um, into leggings but I'll hold it up for you the fabric is amazing it is definitely my kind of fabric 
So it's described as a lycra activewear fabric and it's got all of these beautiful bright colours. It's like an abstract print. Um, I'm trying to find the best way to hold it up to show you. Um, so it's got like orange and pink and blues and I just absolutely love it. Really reminds me of like an abstract painting. It's got a great amount of stretch, perfect for, which is um, what I've turned it into, it's perfect for a pair of leggings. You need four-way stretch and this has got four-way stretch. It's absolutely beautiful, so lovely and soft. Um, and I have used it to make a pair of leggings and I did do the test where you bend over and make sure that it doesn't, you know, show white when you bend over. It gives really nice coverage um, and great actually for exercising. I've worn these leggings already for a run and they were really comfortable to run in. So I definitely recommend getting some of this fabric. I've actually ordered some more to make myself a bralette out of it because I want matching leggings and a bralette. I used a different fabric to make uh, my bralette, which I'll show in my January makes video, but I'm hoping to get a bit more of this fabric to make a matching two piece set um, with the bra top and then the leggings. So really beautiful fabric from Hey So Sister. And I think that they've still got some of that fabric left actually. And then the second fabric is this beautiful, really soft viscose, which is loads of little dots. And then it's got a pale pink background. So it's loads of green dots and then pale pink background. Um, I'm just gonna hold it up so you can see the movement of the fabric, but it's a viscose. It feels like a heavier weight viscose. Oh, actually, um, it feels heavy. Um, folded up it doesn't feel quite so heavy now that I've unwrapped it it's got beautiful amount of um drape and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to turn this into but first of all I thought um a dress and I actually thought of the lotter dress because I love that dress but now I'm thinking maybe the LED wrap or I might turn it into some sort of lightweight trousers for the springtime but it's such a beautiful fabric I love those colors the pale pink and the green together, I just absolutely adore that colourway. And green is my favourite colour. Um, so I resisted that fabric for ages, but then I just gave in in the end. When I was buying the activewear fabric, I thought, why not? And I'm really glad that I did. It's beautiful fabric, really lovely quality, and I can't wait to sew with it. I just need to decide what to turn it into. So then the next four pieces of fabric I bought, I got from Rainbow Fabrics, and they had a big sale on over Christmas. Um, a couple of viscoses, actually five pieces of fabric. I said four, there's actually five pieces of fabric. A couple of pieces of viscose. Um, there is a viscose silk, which is absolutely beautiful. And then there's a cotton fabric too. So if I show you the first one, right, so this is the first one. It's a leopard print, which I absolutely adore. And it's got a lo really light gray background. And then it's got all these gray and black leopard print all over it beautiful movement to it absolutely gorgeous if I hold it open you'll be able to see it's got beautiful drape really beautiful movement to it um it is quite a wide fabric and I think from memory I got two meters of this fabric um not quite sure what I'm going to turn it into but I think some kind of well, I've got two options for this I think either a dress or some wide leg trousers like some palazzo trousers perhaps um, and then it could go with a, maybe a black jumper or a grey jumper, perhaps. Um, but that one's beautiful. I just love anything that's leopard print. So I'm really pleased with that one. Then I've got um, like a... So it's a black background. This is a viscose twill, so it's slightly heavier. And for this, I would really love... I keep saying this in all of my videos or in quite a few of my videos. I want to make a winter version of the True Bias Shelby romper. Um, and I'll put pictures in of what that looks like. So I've got this viscose twill. This reminds me of like William Morris, um, I think I might be upside down actually, William Morris wallpaper. So it's a black background, yellow and brown sort of flowers and leaves and then gray in there. So if I hold it up, you can see what it looks like. Um, and I got, I think I might've got about four meters of this because I knew that I wanted to make the Shelby romper and I want to make a long, um, leg version because I want to be able to wear it in the winter with like a black cardigan or a black jumper over the top um, this has got so much movement to it and because it's a twill it's got a slight texture to it if I, I don't know if you can pick up on that texture but there's a bit of texture to it and because it's a twill it's quite heavy it's quite heavy weight so I think it'll be the perfect type of fabric for a winter make um, and a winter Shelby romper I think would be lovely with some really chunky boots 
and a chunky jumper. I think that would look really cute. So that was the next piece of fabric that I got. It's got lovely drape to it. Did I show you the drape? It's got lovely movement to it, which is great. Um, then the next one is quite a loud fabric. Um, and I just loved the pattern of this. It's a black background and then it's got loads of colourful leaves all over it. So I'll stand up so that you can see what it looks like. But it's another viscose um, and it's got this gorgeous, like really loud leaf print pattern all over it. And I just absolutely love that. It's got so much drape and movement to it. Slightly, you can see my rainbow light through it. It is quite a lightweight fabric. Um, and I got myself, I think I got about three metres of this. So I want to turn this into an LED wrap dress because I think that print would look gorgeous as a wrap. Um, and with that long skirt as well from the, from the pattern, I think that would just look absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to definitely turn that into a dress and I'll probably go for the LED wrap because I really love the shape of that. And I like the high wrap detail on that pattern too. That's another beautiful fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, then I've got a cotton, which has got a, um, sort of a bit of a texture to it. It's almost like a brushed cotton. I don't think it was described as a brushed cotton. I'll go back through my emails and check what it was described as. Um, but it's a black background again. So I've gone for quite dark background fabrics, but then they've got quite a lot of colour to them. Um, and this has got some um, red and purple and green florals and leaves all over it. So here it is. I think I only got two metres of this one and I haven't got any plans for this at the moment, um, but that's what it looks like. And it's a cotton. And like I said, it's got this like brushed texture to it. So I think it'll be quite warm and cosy. I might just use this to make some pyjamas. Um, I think they'll be really nice snuggly pyjamas when it's chilly. Um, but I just adore that print. Um, it hasn't got as much movement, obviously, as a viscose. Uh, it's quite a firm fabric, but it, for a brushed cotton, it is still quite lightweight. Hasn't got as much drape or movement. It's not as floaty as the viscosis that I've shared. Um, but yeah, I just love those colours. I love anything that's got a really bright colour to it and anything that's got green in, um, because green's my favourite colour. So maybe some pyjamas. I'm not quite sure about this one. Um, and then the last fabric that I got is this beautiful... Where's my notebook? So it's called a viscose silk and you've probably seen this. I think a few people have bought this. I think it was an Alice Templey um, fabric and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's quite heavyweight. It's got the, I'm going to have to stand up and show you, but it's got these beautiful stripes that run across it. I'm just seeing which way you hold it up. So it's this absolutely beautiful fabric. It's got a real silky feel to it because of the silk content and it's kind of textures, what, textured where you've got the stripes. When I run my hand over it, it feels sort of a little bit textured where those stripes are. You can feel the bumps of the lines. And then I really love the colours. And then I also really love how the stripes are different. I'm going to have to stand up to show you. So it starts off quite narrow and then the stripes get bigger. Um, and then they just get bigger until the pattern repeats and then there's small stripes again. And these beautiful, like burnt orange red um, colours are just absolutely stunning. And then these sort of peachy um, stripes at the top are really beautiful too. I have absolutely no idea what to turn this into. I think, I think I, oh, how much did I get? I think I got about three metres of this fabric. So I've got quite a lot to play around with. Um, my first thought was turn it into a dressing gown because I think this would be gorgeous as a dressing gown and then maybe some matching pyjamas to go underneath. Um, I could use the Tilly and the Buttons Fifi pyjama top or I could use the Luna, the Sew Over It Luna pyjamas. Um, I think they would work really nicely as pyjamas. Um, but then I thought maybe I could use it to make a dress. So maybe a wrap dress like the LED dress. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe some trousers. The stripes go across. Um, so I'm really not sure what to turn it into. It's quite weighty as well. Um, so yeah, beautiful fabric. If anyone's got any ideas what to turn it into, do let me know. It'd be fun to play around with those stripes. Um, it's lovely and soft, um, but it's quite weighty. If I show you the back of the fabric, you'll be able to see it's got quite a texture to it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's a lovely, lovely fabric. I don't know what to do with it, but I just loved the colours and I really loved the stripes. So I grabbed myself a couple of metres of that one. 
So that's all of the fabrics that I have bought this month. And then the next thing, which isn't fabric, but it is something really beautiful, um, is some bias tape that I got from the Specky Seams dress. So there is lovely um, Laura's logo. Um, so she started a business where um, she stocks bias tape and they're really beautiful. Um, and I ordered four different bias tapes and then I got some in the So Hilly Jane box that came this month too. So I've got five lots of different types of bias tape. Um, and I think I might use some of this for my um, truffle coat that I'm making in the see-through rainbow um, waterproof coating fabric. And I am doing a sew along for that to document the process. Um, but it's just taken me a lot longer than I thought it would, I guess, with the whole lockdown and teaching um, and having to film videos for school, etc. It's just taken a long time. Anyway, this is the first bias tape that I got, which is like an abstract type print. And actually, it reminds me of the fabric that I got from... Um, Rainbow Fabrics, the viscose that's got all the different colours all over it, the colourful leaves. So that's the first one. Then I've got this one, which is like a space theme, you can see on the top. And then the bottom one says made in 2021, which I just thought was a really fun thing to have um, for the new year. Um, and then I've got this one, which is like a tape measure, but it's got loads of little hearts on. And then I've got more of the one that's got little hearts on here and then dinosaurs, because I love dinosaurs. Um, so I've got quite a few. I think I'll be ordering some more bias tape from Laura soon. So thank you very much, Laura, for that. It came really quickly too. I'm very excited about using some bias tape inside some of my garments and for my coat. And then on to some patterns that I have bought. Um, a couple of patterns I haven't actually got to show you to hand, but I'll insert pictures um, of the line drawing so you can see what they look like. Um, and the first one that I've got is the, um, and I've made one actually, I'll show you what it looks like. It is a pattern by Poppy and Jazz, which is a company linked to Sew Over It, and they do children's patterns, babies and toddlers. Um, and I've bought quite a few of their patterns for my nephew and then friends that have got children. Um, and I was going to say when my girls were a bit younger, but I don't think Poppy and Jazz were around when my girls were a little bit younger. And I've made a couple of their patterns recently, like their walnut duffel coats and their pomegranate pyjamas. Then I've got a friend who had a little girl um, last year in April and I've been meaning to get around to making her something. So I bought the Poppy and Jazz pansy dress pattern over Christmas and then I've been really enjoying making her some dresses for her daughter. And the, the one that I want to show you is using a remnant of this fabric that I had left over. I'll just hold it up so you can see what it looks like, but it's super cute. And I just love that it matches what I'm wearing. Um, they live up north, so I'm gonna send this in the post. Um, but I'd love her to send me a photo of her daughter wearing this. And then I was a bit worried about the neckline. So I just used a ribbing for the neckline. I don't know if you can see there. Because uh, I just wanted to make sure that it would stretch. I mean, it's quite a wide neckline anyway. But I was worried that, again, like, like this dress, if I used the sweatshirt fabric, I was worried she wouldn't be able to get it over her daughter's neck. Um, so, yeah, I've got some ribbing for the neckline. And then I've just folded over the cuffs and then hemmed it at the bottom. But it's so cute. And the pansy dress is such a gorgeous little pattern. You've got this gorgeous little bodice and then you've got the sleeves that you insert and then you've got this gorgeous little skirt. Um, it sews together quite quickly, um, but it's meant for jersey um, fabric. So I've used the sweatshirting, which is fine. And then I've used um, a viscose jersey. It does call for lightweight fabrics. Um, so I do hope this, because it's not as lightweight, I do hope that it will still fit her. I'm sure it will still fit her. And this fabric has got a tiny bit of stretch, so it should be okay for her, hopefully. Um, yeah, I've used a cotton jersey and a viscose jersey and a sweatshirting, and it's sewed up beautifully in all those different types of fabrics. So it's a really cute pattern, really easy to put together. I used my machine and my overlocker just to finish the edges um, and just give it a really neat finish. And then I top stitched around the neckline. Um, and then, yeah, cute. So I've made four of those and it, that shows how simple the pattern is to put together. So the pansy dress starts at ages naught to three months and then it goes up to the age of six, which I think is a fantastic age range actually for children's clothes. Um, so it could make some really cute newborn size or um, all the way up to age six. So I've gone for 12 to 18 months and she, her daughter is about eight months old now so I hopefully she'll get a bit of wear out of all of the different versions that I've made for her but I love being able to use the scraps to create something that's super cute I also love being able to make clothes for my friends um so that was the first pattern that I bought 
So the second pattern that I've bought, I've been looking for a pattern for some leggings for when I go running. And um, I have signed up to the Sew Over It VIP club, which used to be called the Sew Over It PDF club. Um, and they do that every year and there's a fee to sign up. It's definitely worth doing because you get a little sneak peek of um, new PDF releases before everybody else gets to see them. You also get 10% off that PDF release. So if there's a pattern you do like the look of, you get a very slight discount. Um, but you also basically get the money back. It's £10 to sign up, but then you get a free pattern when you sign up. You get a code to get a pattern. Um, and you can use that any point in the year. You just can't use it on the newest pattern release. You have to use it on something that's already been released, like the previous month or the previous months. And um, so it's worth doing because you get that money that you pay for the subscription back. And it's a one-off payment. You don't pay each month. So it's £10 and then you're done. Um, and within that, you get to order your, you get to buy yourself um, a free pattern. So it's definitely worth doing. So anyway, I signed up for that and then I used my um, code to get a free pattern. And the pattern that I went for was the Hubie leggings, I think that's how you say it, H-U-B-Y. So it's a pattern that comes in sizes 6 to 30, so a great size range. Um, there's different versions that you can do. You can do a long length, you can do three quarters, and then there's different waistbands that you can do. So you can either do a plain waistband or you can do a blocked waistband, which I'll show you in a second. These are the line drawings. So this is the long version, plain waistband, three quarters, plain waistband. Long version with a blocked um, waistband. So you get this panel piece, uh, three quarters with the panelled waistband. Um, and then that's what the back looks like. So it comes in sizes 6 to 30, a size 6 is a bust measurement 31 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 34 inches. And then the size 30 is a 57 inch bust, 50 inch waist and a 60 inch hip. Now I have already used this pattern and it's so easy to sew up, particularly if you go for the plain waistband. Um, what I really like about the pattern pieces is it's one piece for each leg. Um, so there's no outside seam, so they're really comfortable in terms of active wear. I don't know if I can see the pattern piece, um, the line drawing for the pattern piece. If I do the lay plans, so you'll be able to see what I mean about the piece for the leg. So there's there, you know, you've got that pattern piece and that pattern piece, and then you've got the waistband. So really straightforward. And then the waistband, it's four pieces if you do the plain waistband. Um, and you attach two together to create the outer waistband. You attach two together to make the inner waistband. And then you attach them at the top, turn them over, and then attach them to the leggings. I hope that makes sense. So really easy and straightforward to put together. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, it recommends light to medium weight active wear knit fabrics like polyester spandex or polyester elastane blend blends. Four way stretch or lycra with at least 50% horizontal stretch. And, you, and it says that you might want to panel the waistband with a contrast fabric, in which case you'll need an additional 25 centimetres of fabric. Both versions take between 1.2 and 1.7 metres. I bought, I think I might have bought, did I buy a metre or 1.5 metres? And I have loads left over. I must have bought 1.5 metres and I have loads of fabric left over. So a really great pattern. I'm definitely going to make more Hubie leggings, um, really comfortable to wear. And actually I'd say the sizes are quite accurate. So I made a size eight, um, which is a 26 inch waist and a 36 inch hip. Um, and I didn't grade between sizes because my hips are a 35 inch. Um, and I went with an eight and they fit me perfectly and they're really comfortable. So I definitely see myself making more of these leggings in the future. It's a great pattern. Um, and now I'm just on the lookout for some more lycra and active wear fabrics. So if anyone's got any suggestions of where to buy, do let me know in the comments below because I'm definitely on the lookout for some more. I want to do some matching um, bralette and, and legging type combos um, for running. And then I'll just pop a t-shirt on and um, a jacket for when it's a bit chilly outside. So the next pattern I wanted to talk about kind of leads on nicely from the leggings because I was looking for a bralette pattern for when I was doing some exercise at home, maybe some yoga or just some stretches um, to go with any of my leggings that I make. So I had a look online to find a bralette pattern and I came across a pattern company that I haven't used before called Rad Patterns. I'll link their website down below so you can go and check them out. And once I was scrolling Instagram for sportswear and bralettes, I came across their pattern called the 25K Bralette, 
which comes in sizes extra extra small to 6x um, and this is what it looks like so there's the model wearing it I'll just show you the line drawing so you can see what it looks like and then I'll go back to talking about um, what the sizes are so there we go um, so it's quite a straightforward bralette pattern it's got a lower back higher front neckline uh, and then just a waistband so it comes in sizes extra extra small um, and then you go off your bust measurement for it so there's the option for a full bust regular cup full bust smaller cup and then full bust larger cup so I've made this up already and I did choose to twirl it because I wasn't quite sure whether I would need to go for a full bust or the regular bust cup so I went off my measurements and thought that I would need to do a full bust um, larger cup I think I went for first but actually when I made that it was quite gappy um, quite gapy under the armhole so I ended up going to a regular cup which suited me perfectly so I went for I think I went for I tried an extra small first with the full bust larger cup and that was too gapy around the armhole and sort of the sides so then I went to a small and did a regular cup and that fits me really nicely now um, what, I what I'm going to try and do the next time, and I'll talk about this more in my January makes, but I'm going to try and extend, I don't know if I can show you, where's the line drawing? So I'm going to try and extend this part. So the band is quite now uh, quite wide anyway, but I want to add a little bit of length here where it attaches into the band, because I'm just finding that the band is rising up a little bit. It's comfortable, it's fine to wear, but I'd like to have a play around with that. That's the only thing that I would say really easy to put together so it is a lined bralette and there's two options for lining it you can either attach um let me see if i can find the step in the instructions so you can either attach like an armband piece um here or you can line it using the burrito method um so i opted to do try both so when i was doing the toile i did the armband method um, and then when I did my actual bralette, I did the burrito method. And I would say from personal experience, my preferred method is using the burrito method. I think it gives a much neater finish. So that's what I would do moving forward. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, let me see what it suggests. So fabric requirements, it's um, designed for use with knit fabrics with at least 50% four way stretch and you will need the listed amount in both outer fabric and lining fabric. Cotton elastane blends will yield a very minimal support, cosy lounge bralette, while swim or athletic knits will provide a slightly tighter, more supportive feeling bralette. And what I opted to go for was swimwear um, fabric, because I had some left over in my stash. Um, I am gonna have a look for some athletic knits so that I can get more of a supportive feel for when I wear it for when I'm going running. Um, Really easy pattern to put together. I really enjoyed sewing it and it's definitely a pattern that I'm going to reach for time and time again. Um, really comfortable to wear as well. And my toile, I'm actually wearing as a, a bralette to wear to bed. So although it was a toile and it's not perfect, I can still get some use out of it. So in terms of sizes, we've got extra, extra small, which for an underbust size, 27 to 28 inches. Full bust regular cup is 30 to 31.5 inches. Full bust smaller cup measurement, 28 to 29 and a half inches. And then a full bust larger cup, 32 to 33 and a half inches. And then a 6X for an underbust size of 56 to 57 inches. Full bust regular cup, 72 to 77 inches. Full bust smaller cup, 68 to 71 inches. And then a full bust larger cup, 77 to 80 inches. Um, yeah, it's a pattern that I'm going to use more. I can see plenty of the two 5k bralette in my um, underwear drawer really comfortable to wear and quite straightforward to make too so it's definitely a pattern that I would recommend if you're looking for a bralette pattern then I've got a couple of patterns that I had been umming and ahhing about um, and then I bought them over Christmas um, one because I'm doing a collaboration with Kath who's made by Kath Craft I'll link her channel down below so that one is the Bakerloo blouse and dress by Nina Lee patterns and then the other one, as soon as this was released, I really wanted it, but then I hesitated for ages. But I've seen so many beautiful versions that I bought it in the Christmas sales. And it is the I Am Irma shirt, which is just absolutely beautiful shirt and shirt dress. I just absolutely love that waterfall 
sort of drop hem at the back. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'll talk about this one first, which is the Nina Lee Bakerloo Blouse and Dress. Um, it comes in sizes 6 to 20. Um, it, you can either do a blouse or you can do a dress, and those are the line drawings, and it's got this gorgeous big collar. Um, it's got a keyhole fastening at the back, and then the, because of that, the back is cut in two pieces. And then it's got this beautiful cuff detail, which you create by um, putting in some elastic here. And then you get these gorgeous big sleeves. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a try. I haven't decided whether I'm going to make the blouse or the dress yet. I love both versions. I'm a little bit hesitant about the collar because I haven't sewn anything with quite such a big collar before, but I'm quite excited to give it a try. So in terms of fabrics, um, suggest light to medium weight fabrics like lawn, poplin, chambray, soft needle cord, taffeta, and any fabric with enough body to create the collar but not too much bulk to gather into the frill. And if you're after some inspiration, go and search the um, Bakerloo blouse and dress over on Instagram. There are some absolutely beautiful versions of both, um, which is what inspired me to get the pattern eventually. So I'm really excited about that pattern. So the next pattern that I wanted to talk about is this one. It's called the I Am Irma, and it is a dress or shirt with classic or bishop sleeves. Um, which I think is just absolutely beautiful. I love all the versions, this one in particular, um, and I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. I think this is a pattern though that I'm going to need to leave until I've got like half term or Easter, so I've got a bit more headspace to really concentrate on it because it looks like it's got quite a lot of steps. It's an intermediate pattern. Um, it comes in sizes 36 to 46. So for a size 36, it's the 32 and a quarter inch bust, 24 and a half inch waist, 34 and 5 eighths of an inch um, hip. And then it's aimed at a size, aimed at a height 5 foot 5 inches. Um, and then for a size 46, 40 and an eighth bust, 32 and a quarter inch waist and a 42 and a half inch hip. And then it also gives you the finished garment measurements. So there are different options. View A is a dress with classic sleeves which is there. And then you've got view B, which is the shirt with classic sleeves. You've got view C, which is the dress with bishop sleeves, which if I'm honest, is the look that I am totally going for. And then view D is the shirt with the bishop sleeves too. In terms of recommended fabrics, poplin, viscose, lightweight denim, crepe, uh, washed linen, chambray, wax, flannel, lightweight cotton twill, lightweight woolen fabric, and lightweight jacquard. So a huge range of fabrics that they would recommend for making this. Um, I'm really excited about giving it a go. Um, and I, yeah, I'm going to spend some time digesting the instructions first. Looks like there's quite a lot of pattern pieces too. Um, but there's so many beautiful details to it. I just love the look of those cuffs. And those sleeves, I think they look absolutely beautiful. And I really love the look of this. I've seen some absolutely gorgeous ones made up in like a viscose or rayon fabric, which is really soft and drapey. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm really excited to give that a try. But I don't think that's something that I'm going to rush into. I think I'm going to read the instructions, really think carefully about my fabric choices, and then enjoy that as a really slow, slow, slow so is what I meant to say. So that's another beautiful pattern which I'm excited about. So the last pattern I don't actually have with me at the, at the moment because it's a pattern that's just been released but I'll put images in of what it looks like and it is a pattern by True Bias and it's called the Marlowe Sweater. So it's a cardigan, a button down cardigan that comes in two different styles. You've got a shorter version and a longer version and I'll put pictures in of the shorter version and the longer version so you can see what they both look like. It comes in sizes zero to 30, and for a size zero, it's a 32 inch bust, 26 inch waist, and a 34 inch hip. And then for a size 30, it's a 57 and a half inch bust, 50 and a half inch waist, and 59 and a half inch hip. Um, suggested fabrics, medium weight fabrics, like a boucle, a sweatshirt, French terry, and you can use stretch or non-stretch fabrics for this pattern. Um, it's a button down, like I said, it's a cardigan that's got dropped shoulder feature and it comes in two lengths. And I'm really excited about getting this sewn so I'm really excited about getting this sewn up. And I think, um, 
one of these knit fabrics that I showed you at the beginning will look beautiful in a cardigan. So I didn't want to print, I bought PDF and I didn't want to print the PDF because I thought it'd be quite a lot of pages. So I have used a company called Fabuloso who I'll link down below um, and I've sent off the Marlowe sweater to be printed as a copy shop pattern and I'm really looking forward to that coming back. Um, I can't talk about the company too much at the moment because it had, the order hasn't arrived back and I want to be able to talk about what the quality of the paper's like and the service that I received. But I did find their website really easy to use. Um, they've got a drop-down menu at the top where you select that you want to print your pattern. You upload the file and then add it to your basket and then check out as you would normally. So really straightforward to use. So I'll pop all their details down below so that you can go and check them out if you're interested. I love finding out about other copy shop companies that I can use. Um, and I will keep reviewing um, and letting you know once my pattern arrives, I'll give you a bit more information about how long it took for it to arrive and what the quality of the paper is like. So that is a roundup of all of the patterns and fabrics that I've been buying this month. Lots of exciting fabrics and patterns. I just need lots more time so that I can do sewing and make all of the lovely things that I've got in my head. Um, I just need more time so that I can sit down and um, make those lovely things. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already, please, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, thank you as always for watching and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.